So we want to maximize that subject to a budget constraint. And the most common budget constraint is the one I wrote down last time, which is a linear budget constraint that comes out of a market economy where you can buy as much or as little as you want at prices. But we could easily substitute a nonlinear budget constraint and come up with a very similar kind of analysis. In fact, we'll see later how you can use this same demand curves we came up here in the context of a nonlinear budget constraint. Okay. Anyway, so that's going to be our problem. We set up the Lagrangian for this, which is a simple technique for constrained optimization. And that was just u of x1 up to xn plus lambda m minus the sum of the xi pi. And we said the critical or first order conditions for this are partial u partial x1 equals lambda p1 down to partial u partial xn equals lambda pn and the budget constraint itself, xi pi i equals 1 to n. And we just assumed you exhausted your budget, which is a pretty weak assumption, right? As long as you have something you value spending money on in this problem, you'll exhaust your budget. Even if you got tired of n minus one of the goods, as long as there's one good that you want more of, you're going to exhaust your budget. You'll just spend whatever's left on that one good. So pretty weak conditions where you exhaust your budget. So you can you see often in textbooks people talk about the case where people are satiated or whatever. I'm not going to bother with that. I've never found an empirical use for that. It never seemed like a, a constraint that I, uh, I wanted to loosen up. So anyway, so that's going, to be our, that's going to be our result. And so the solution, remember what this is. This is this proportionality relationship between margin utility and prices. And that was important for many things. First off, we don't directly see marginal utilities. So this theory says, while I don't see marginal utilities, I do see prices. And I can infer marginal utilities up to a factor of proportionality from prices. That's a really important result. That was the one we used last time to be able to talk about whether utilities going up or down, aggregate across different kinds of goods. There's all kinds of things we can do based solely on that proportionality. Because the idea that this person is maximizing tells us that in equilibrium, those marginal utilities of those different goods, which I can't see directly, right? I can't look at his eyes and say, this is your marginal utility. I can't measure that. But I know if he's optimizing, it's proportional to prices. And I can go in the grocery store and see the prices on the shelf. So I can see these and therefore infer something about those. That's really a key part of it. Now, these proportionality restriction, which comes down to, like we said before, some notion of marginal value equals marginal cost, right? That's what this is. Or utility per dollar being the same across all the goods, but that's really the same statement. All those things, together with the budget constraint, get us to those Marshallian demand curves I talked about last time, which express his equilibrium choices as a function of prices and income. 